Welcome back to Ranking Every Single Easter Egg Song, Part 3. Uh, it means a lot that you came back. Subscribe if you enjoy. Thanks. Look. Activate four symbols. What happens then? The artifacts are gone. What now? Why couldn't I have had a normal father? There were symbols like this in Dad's litter. Maybe Sean knows what they mean. Drowning. Voyage of Despair. Catchiness. 6 out of 20. Fittingness. 6 out of 6. Lore Significance. 4 out of 4. Overall. 16 out of 30. D tier. This is one of the rare songs where the fittingness and the lore score carry the rating for this song. Obviously the song named Drowning is perfect for Voyage of Despair. I mean, they're literally fucking drowning in the song. I mean, it fits perfectly. And the underlying tones of sorrow and mystery do fit the map and the story as a whole. It, it's, it's perfect. And it, it has some lore implications in the background that does give you some hints at the story going forward. So it, it does do very well in both categories. But I'm done with the compliments. This song makes me fall asleep. I don't like it. I hate Voyager Despair's map. I think it is one of the worst maps in Zombies. There's a lot on it. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of things. It's just as a map to play, it's not fun. I, but enough about the map. The song isn't helping the map either, though. I'm just not a big fan of it. And if you like it, that's fine. But I don't think you can put it higher than a C or a D tier. And for me, and my rating system, it would belong in E. Maybe even F if I didn't acknowledge its middingness and fittingness and lore. But luckily for the song, both categories exist for my scoring. So with that, it gets its score of a 16 out of 30. D tier. The robot patrols the site. It allows nothing to leave. Shepherd of Fire. Catchiness, 16 out of 20. Fittingness, 4 out of 6. Lore Significance, 1 out of 4. Overall, 20 out of 30. C tier. Oh, Origins. Shepherd of Fire is a great Avengers Fathomfold song, and it does really fit the kick-ass introduction of our premise crew. But for Origins as a whole, it isn't anything particularly spectacular. First, I, I should say the song itself. Obviously, it's a great song. I mean, 16 out of 20, it's a great song. It, uh, Bench Sevenfold is a great band. This is one of his great, one of their better songs. And great vibe and everything like that. But for the map itself, I mean, it doesn't get too many points of fittingness beyond the middle of the road three or four. Uh, because, you know, it's still just an Avenged Sevenfold song. I mean, it doesn't do anything spectacular for the map. Uh, and obviously, it doesn't really have any lower points bef beyond a single one due to the fact that you could make the big stretch that Dr. Monty or someone else could be the Shepherd of Fire in the context of the song. But again, I am stretching to give this song a point. That said, you know, I have to admit, the song is catchy as hell, like I said. And, and honestly, what more matters? When you're killing zombies and you're hanging around in the, the uh, in the middle shooting things with your eye staff, I mean, like, what else do you care about other than Shepherd of Fire it's playing? I don't care much for the song beyond it, but, you know, it does what it does well. So see to it goes. We all fall down. Die rise. Catchiness? 12 out of 20. Fittingness? 6 out of 6. Lower significance? 2 out of 4. Overall? 20 out of 30. C tier. Unlike Alone, this is definitely not my favorite Nova song, but it's definitely far from my least favorite. It's in a comfortable middle ground. 
definitely hits the vibe of Die Rise well as, you know, everyone falls down again and again and again. But much like the gameplay, the song gets repetitive quickly. The chorus is literally Nova saying we all fall down four times in a row. I know because I count it. And this chorus gets played a lot. However, that said, it doesn't take away from the song too much because it is still a fairly catchy song. The parts between the chorus are hype and do a good job of building up to the chorus. But by the time the second by by the second time the chorus plays, I'm already tired of it. The the song does have a good ending, I will say. But where it loses more points is that the lower significance doesn't really say anything that carry on doesn't already say. Well, we are zombies. We are dying. The world is dead. Like, Carry On already said all that. Nothing really changed there. And so, it, and to the, it, it, I can't give it too much more. So, 20 to 30, C tier. Must remember, water with 115 is not for drinking. Water with 115 is not for drinking. Water with 115 is not for drinking. Dead Flowers, Zetsubo no Shima. Catchiness, 18 out of 20. Fittingness, 6 out of 6. Lore Significance, 4 out of 4. Overall, 28 out of 30. Finally, we go back to a song that's going to take me a little bit to describe. <laughs> Dead Flowers is a song that is slept on in the zombies community only because of the map it's on and how slow the song initially seems. First off, I have to say that I personally think Zetsubo no Shima is the best map on Black Ops 3, and I will fight anyone who says I'm wrong. It gets shit on way too much. I think it is a great, very unique map that did a lot well. But anyways, moving on from that, even though I could talk about it, honestly, just let me know. I could also make a video just on Zetsubo no Shima and how great it is. I've loved it since its glitchy day one release, but I don't know. Video for another time if anyone's curious. The song, however, back to on track, is like eye candy, but you know, for the ears. So I guess ear candy, whatever. Even just the first note that Maluka hits in the song is amazing and sets the tone very well. If you listen to the Easter egg song from Buried, Always Running, which is also sung by Maluka, it gives off the, the same vibe, but in my opinion, more advanced. I will say, however, five minutes for the song is a little long, and it can seem to drag on for a little if you listen to it on repeat, which I do think takes away from it a little bit, but not a lot. But unlike its dead song counterpart from BO3, Dead Again, which we already covered, Dead Flowers fits its map perfectly. The map is all about flowers. I mean, it is literally the entire planting system that everyone knows about ZNS is why a lot of people hate it. It's the entire thing, the entire theme of the map centers around flowers and plants. The song itself is also dark and gloomy, just like the map. It's also hypnotic, just like the map. And it describes the themes of Zetsubo no Shima perfectly in its lyrics. I would argue that it fits its map better than almost any other song, except for, you know, maybe like Snakeskin Boots. But it, and it's not just the lyrics that fit perfectly, it's even the sounds of the instrument. It, everything sounds so dark and hypnotic and, and and depressing and almost dissonant but in a melodic hypnotic way it, it's it's very unique in what it does and finally from a lore perspective it has a lot to say it's why the song is so long it but it does have very meaningful information to share it's not just a bunch of fluff it describes not just the map and not just the zombies as a whole, but also our crew. It has a lot of subtext in the lyrics, and if you read them closely, it talks about the doomed cyclical nature of our crew, the rotten core of all of it, and the despair of living in this cycle, and so much more. It discusses the topic that Dead Again brought up very briefly, and furthers it by focusing not on the the intensity of killing zombies and trying again, but rather the raw despair and confusing cosmic horror that comes with what they're trying to do, what their goal is, what their mission is. 
which is literally fighting against gods. How despairing can that be? And I love that this song touches. Coming home. Loon. Catchiness, 15 out of 20. Fittingness, 6 out of 6. Lower significance, 4 out of 4. Overall, 25 out of 30. A tier. Now, no, I know. This is a big risk. Uh, but again, it's a random order. But the fact that I have two very controversial ratings next to each other is, is going to be something. But a lot of people think that this song is like a D tier song. And I think this is going to be a controversial take, but I think Coming Home is a really good song. If you don't like Scream or Death Metal, I completely understand. And I also don't even think that Elena Screaming the song is as good as like 115, for instance. But it still sounds good and fits the vibe that the song is going for. It's very short, which I think fits the song well as it says its message and leaves. And there are some rough moments in the song, yes, but I think it saves with parts that Elena comes back and sings with a very beautiful voice. The song resolves into this nice back and forth between the singer and the monster, representing both sides of Samantha fighting within her, much like it's done before with like 115. It's very beautiful sounding, very poetic as a whole. As I'm sure for from me talking about Samantha, you can guess that this song gets a perfect 4 out of 4 on lore significance. Very similar to Lost from Cold War. It allows us to peek into Samantha's mind and see what she's going through, while also dropping bits of lore that we know about, such as Kill Them All for her father. Very interesting stuff, and leads to the fittingness of the map as well. This is literally the place that Max is said to kill them all to his daughter. This is the place that all of the horror started for Samantha, and Samantha's hopes that it will end, because all she wants to do is make her father proud and come home. She repeats this at the end, that she's coming home, and that's because it is all she wants to do. And even at the end, the final lyric, she screams, I'm coming home. Because it's not really a question. It's not asking. It's a state. She wants this to end. She is coming home. Because at the end of the day, she is a little lost girl. Finally, thematically, it fits the moon well. I mean... The instruments are very deep and hollow in the background, and it emphasizes the chaos of being on the literal moon, and literally being teleported back and forth between the moon and the earth is actually chaos, so even the background music to the lyrics fits very well to moon's themes and environment. Overall, just a great sounding song, very fitting easter egg song. A tier. Carry on. Transit. Catchiness? 9 out of 20. Fittingness? 6 out of 6. Lower significance? 3 out of 4. Overall? 18 out of 30. C tier. Not to be confused with Carry On by Avenged Sevenfold, uh, one word, Carry On, is by uh, Clark S. Nova. And Carry On is like transit. I mean, it's one of the songs of all time. It's okay. It's very middle of the road in catchiness. It starts off well, and then just gets steadily worse, in my opinion. Not much else to say. It's just stale. Only a 9 out of 20. Very slightly below 50%. Uh, and, and something I guess I will say, which gave it a little nudge in the lore significance, is that I do enjoy the callback to previous zombie songs in the lyrics. There are references to 115, The One, the Lullaby of a Dead Man, and I, I think more in the lyrics. And it's very clever, deserves an extra point in lore significance for the references alone, but that said, lore-wise, it doesn't do more besides, hey, there are zombies, we need to fight them. Uh, nothing real original there. However, as for fitting this to the map, it works. I mean, if transit literally carries on and on and on and on, but it, and if I run to the bank and get my perks and everything, it can take 20 minutes to get set up without killing a single zombie. But transit is repetitive and slow. You get the picture, and, and so is the song. 
you boot of transit excited hopeful you hear the 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 dead lullaby of a dead man remix intro song uh, and you're like all right let's play some transit build your turbine but halfway in you're exhausted and you're debating on already finishing and you haven't even finished round one that's basically how the song feels however there was just you know something about the song that screams transit to me when i hear it i can hear the bus horn and like i can picture the bus the fog and everything i can't place it but there's there's something there's something about it maybe it's the constant references to night the undead running etc but regardless it fits very well to me and deserves a six out of six for transit Lullaby of a Dead Man, Verrucht. Catchiness, 19 out of 20. Fittingness, 5 out of 6. Lore significance, 3 out of 4. Bonus point, 1. Overall, 28 out of 30. S tier. Lullaby of a Dead Man is one of, if not my most favorite slow song at all zombies. I think it checks all of the boxes, and I will sing this song constantly. I don't think it's better than some of the greats, obviously, but to me, this is absolutely S tier. And if I just want to listen to a song that isn't too long, is catchy, and I want to sing and jam out to, this song is definitely in my queue and is in my playlist. It fits the lullaby theme perfectly, but elevating it to a point that doesn't make me want to fall asleep. It makes me want to jam out. The instruments slap and definitely give strong, classic zombie vibes. And most important of all, Elena's singing is absolutely beautiful in this, to the point of being hypnotic, but in a good way. And going back to that strong, classic zombie vibe I was talking about, I mean, the song literally builds off of that original Game Over song, giving you already a sense of nostalgia, even though that this is the second map to ever exist. And I do know that it isn't the most complicated song possible, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But in case it is a bad thing for you, I took off the point for catchiness. So, you know, you're welcome, I guess. But both lore and fittingness get the max points minus one for a reason. The song fits Nazi zombies to a T. It is quintessential Nazi zombies music, in my opinion, and is only out zombified by 115. And I think the ranking reflects that well. However, it doesn't necessarily scream Verrucht specifically. The lullaby nature does remind me of Asylum in a weird way. The sleepy, hypnotic, almost captive feeling the song gives fits in Asylum very well. But I could also see this song in Nocturne Toten, or even Shino Nu. Less of the latter, but you get. But for Nazi Zombie song, it, it fits the mode very, very well. And the map very well, hence the 5 out of 6. But just not a perfect score. Lore, however, is in a very similar manner. A three out of four. Because, well, it introduces us to the idea of a zombie controller. It gives us their motivations. It tells us that they control them, they want you to die, but and that they know that you will struggle. It's an incredible introduction to this concept, but it isn't more than a three because it doesn't do much else than introduce this idea in our head of maybe there is a deeper meaning behind the undead. Maybe there is a controller. It's very interesting, but lore-wise, not much else. And finally, I had to give it a bonus point, because it is literally the first original Easter egg song in Call of Duty Zombies. Notch may have had WTF on the radio, but even then it was kind of an eh Easter egg song, and I believe was also used in the campaign. So it's not very original, it's also not a lyrical song, and Lullaby of the Dead Man is much more iconic and memorable, and a lot of people, myself included, their first Easter egg song. It deserves that bonus point. And since Lullaby is a very fully fleshed out song, sung by Elena, played by Kevin for the first time, it's a masterpiece. And it deserves no less than a missed tier.
Samantha Sorrow, Gora Kirby. Catchiness, 9 out of 20. Fittingness, 0 out of 6. Lore significance, 2 out of 4. Overall, 11 out of 30. D tier. In case you didn't know this song existed, this song takes place in Gorod Krovi after completing the Samantha Doll Easter Egg, and I believe is actually the default Samantha Doll Easter Egg completion song for most of the Zombie Chronicles maps. It's a very interesting piece, but doesn't really remind me at all of Samantha's Lullaby, and it's kind of a mediocre OST. It's very run-of-the-mill and doesn't do anything special. I didn't feel myself really missing out on anything when I found out that the song existed, and I feel really bad putting it this low, but I mean, fittingness-wise, it just doesn't scream Gorod Krovi. But Samantha doesn't really exist in this dimension, and she isn't really a strong force in this version of the universe, so I don't really understand her placement in this dimension, and by extension, the placement of this song. And because of that, and a couple other reasons, I, I can't give this song any points in fittingness, as it would feel so much better in a plethora of maps other than this one. And building off of that, why is Samantha sorrowful? And why specifically in Gorod is she sorrowful to you, to begin with? A lot of things just don't really make sense about it, so I, I couldn't give it any points. I gave the lore section though, however, to make up for this, a 2, because the song's placement does raise some questions in the lore. Granted, we don't get any answers to these questions, but it does raise questions like, is Samantha here? What is she doing here? Why is she sorrowful? Stuff like that. And also, hearing that Samantha is sorrowful gives very basic lore implications, nothing too deep, but I gave it a 2 out of 4 for this reason. Therefore. This song lands overall in a very low D tier below even the original Samantha's Lullaby, regretfully, but I think it warrants that placement. Uh, thanks for watching this shit show. Subscribe. Bye.